so st f stains and dyes are still used routinely in diagnostics, uh, but for the basic science applications, researchers now have embraced fluorescence microscopy. Why fluorescence? Well, if you think about how easy it is for you to detect stars in a night sky um, against a black background, you see that it's a really high contrast technology. So if you want to see stars at dawn or um, dusk, or if you are standing in the middle of a city, you can't see them. But if you're out in the desert and you're looking against the black background, you can see the stars. And th this is the idea that we are uh, taking advantage of in fluorescence microscopy. If we can make the sample glow in the b bits and pieces that we want to see, we can pick that up very effectively. So the, the development of fluorescent labels went hand in hand with our um, ability to create reagents for particular proteins of interest. And we create these reagents nowadays taking advantage of the adaptive immune response of uh, animals to create antibodies that are specific to our proteins of interest. So in combination with these specific reagents for individual proteins, we are now able to um, use multiple colors to give us information about where these proteins are, what cells they're labeled, in re reference to the tissue around. Um, and that can be very helpful in developing new methodologies for diagnostics. There is, however, a challenge that fluorescence microscopy um, has that required development of new microscopes for, um, um, for getting better images. And the challenge is um, that the signature of a single f molecule, a fluorescent molecule, is actually a diffraction-limited spot. It's not um, a single point. We can't, because of what happens with light in um, lenses, we are picking up the signature as this diffraction volume, which is um, about a third of a, of a micrometer um, in lateral dimension. And in the third axial dimension, it's actually even worse. And we are picking up a, a football-shaped diffraction pattern, which is about twice as high as wide. So this blurring that happens for these fluorophores as they are detected is a problem when there is too much dense labeling in a thicker piece of tissue because this blurring will essentially lead to a loss of contrast and it could be that you actually can't make out what is coming from the optical, from the focal plane of the objective. In order to get rid of this blur in the fluorescence microscope, um, you there was a development of the laser scanning confocal microscope in the 1970s. And essentially what it did is it used a l diffraction limited spot from a laser to illuminate the sample. Um, and combining this with the detection of light that comes from that diffraction limited spot by refocusing the light through a small pinhole before it hits the detector. Now if the light comes from a fluorophore which is above or below the focal plane of the objective, its light will not be focused correctly in that pinhole and it will be eliminated from detection. But because you are eliminating only a single spot in your sample, you now need to use serial acquisition of spot by spot by spot by scanning the laser beam across your sample to recreate an image digitally in the computer. So this technique of eliminating out of focus light is called optical sectioning um, in the microscope. And there are several different ways of doing this, but the easiest, no, the most standard is using the laser scanning confocal microscope. So in the laser scanning confocal microscope, we acquire this image of just the fluorescence that comes from the focal plane. And by now, slightly adjusting the focal plane of the objective compared to the sample, we can create a series of images um, that are optically sectioned that we can reconstruct in a 3D volume of what the sample looked like. 
However, because we have to acquire the images point by point by point, um, the image acquisition is very slow and um, it can take a very long time to um, get a data set from, from a laser scanning confocal microscope. So for diagnostics, people have tried to develop methods that are faster in the image acquisition and these methods are ba based on the CCD technology for the acquisition where you're not limited by point by point scanning um, and they use um, structured illumination or they're based on knowledge about what happens in the microscope to the light to deconvolve the image um, mathematically from the knowledge about the point spreading that happens in the microscope. 